Hallelujah. Praises to the name of the Lord God Almighty. So excited to come your way once again today. This is another day that God has made for us. Hallelujah. David says, I'm glad when they say, let us go into the house of the Lord. Every time we come into the house or the presence of the Lord, there is bound to be healing. There is bound to be deliverance. There's bound to be breakthrough. There's bound to be answers. And I trust God for you today that this will be another day that will bring about a testimony in your life, in your ministry, in your marriage, in your home, in your academics, in the life of your children, in the name of God. Hallelujah. Welcome to Times of Miracle. So we're excited because God is still in the business of doing miracle in the life of his own. Jesus told that woman, healing is the bread of the children. That means as a child of God, there is provision for you. There is healing for you. There is breakthrough for you. There is deliverance for you. And it's my prayer that today, God will bring about that, that breakthrough, that desire, that healing that you so desire in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you once again. And thank you for tuning in and for joining in in this broadcast. And God will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Kindly, if you're watching from YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. Like it and then share it to the praise and glory of his name. If you're watching from Facebook, also uh, like that uh, page, like it and share it, make comment so that we can interact on the things that God is doing today in our midst. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we're excited to have you here today. And so excited to be an instrument that God is using to bring his word for us today. Hallelujah. You can support us on various platforms. Support us on various platforms. You can send me email. You can inbox me. You can make a call. You know, all the details are after this message. And if you feel to do any financial support, you can please do that on the, uh, uh, through the means that is displayed on your screen right now. And God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Praise the name of the Lord God Almighty. Are you ready? I'm ready to dish out the word of God today. Today, I have a word that I want to share that God laid in my spirit that I want to share to us today. And it is entitled, Three Pillars of Faith. Three Pillars of Faith. Three Pillars of Faith. Hallelujah. I want to take my reading from the book of Luke. Luke, one of my, my, my wonderful scripture, Luke chapter 22. Luke 22, you know, verse 31. That was Jesus talking to Simon Peter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke 22, verse 31. Kindly, before we start, I'd like us to take a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we hear your word today, O oh God, bless us. Cause the hearer to be blessed. Cause the listener to be blessed. We ask so God for your anointing upon your word today. Let your word provide healing, deliverance, breakthrough, answers, encouragement to as many that are in need of them, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we break the powers of the enemy. We shut down the mouths of the lion and we decree freedom and deliverance upon your people today as they hear your word for the entrance of your word. Give it light and give it understanding to the simple. Let every one of us gain knowledge and light and understanding today to the glory and praise of your name. We bind every distracting spirit. 
we bind every powers of the enemy that twist the word of God in the heart of people. We destroy them today. Let this world cause a revival, provoke a revival, set fire in the heart of men. That everyone that hear this word of God, your anointing will get access into their spirit and provoke a revival to serve you the more and to stand in fact in your word in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. And I ask you, God, for your anointing and your grace upon me today to be a servant in your hand, O oh God, and an instrument in your hand, O oh God, and your mouthpiece, O oh God, to speak to the very needs of your people. In Jesus' name, I pray. And amen and amen. God is good. Praise to his name forever. So excited this uh, uh, day today. So let's read in the book of Luke, chapter uh, 22, verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that thy faith fail not. When thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. I prayed for you that your faith fail not. Ladies and gentlemen, talking about three pillars of faith. The strength of the believer is his faith. The strength of every believer is his faith in God. And because of that, the believer's faith has become a target of the enemy. Anything Satan does in your life, I mean, any challenge and difficulty that it throws at you in life, it is to the intent of destroying your faith. But I come to you today and I decree and prophesy and declare that whatever challenge thrown at you, your faith will stand against them. You will overcome them. You will not succumb to the defeat of the enemies. In the name of Jesus, God will cause you to triumph and to excel in the face of any difficulty or adversity thrown at you. Say a big amen. It is yours in the name of Jesus. That devil is a liar. The believer's strength is his faith. Abacom told us. He says, the righteous will survive by faith. In other words, the, the righteous will live by his faith. That means every Christian exists in terms and in the realms of strength and victory via the grounds and the premises of his faith. In other words, as it is your faith, let it be so unto you. Are you hearing me this day? Are you hearing me this morning or this evening? Wherever you are hearing me from, I pray that in the name of Jesus, that the Lord God of heaven will come true for you. I don't know what damage has been done to your Christian faith. Many of us are at a place and at a point right now where we are doubting God. We are doubting even the ability of God to provide. And we ask like the people of Israel in the wilderness, can God still provide bread in the wilderness? And the Bible says, the Lord told them, I will show you that I am still a God. I'm a God in the valley. I'm a God on the mountain. I'm a God in the daytime. And I'm still a God in the nighttime. That it doesn't matter where you are. I am still God. I can still make a way where there seems to be no way. All I need you to do is to strengthen your faith in me. And the Bible said, God provided for them. God made 
make food for them even available in the wilderness. I've come to speak to you, child of God. It doesn't matter where you are going through. It doesn't matter what you are going through. I pray that your faith will not be shaken. Your faith will not be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will come through for you. The Lord will put strength on your faith. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will cause you to receive a token of miracle so that you can have reasons. You can have reasons to give God praise. You can have reasons to thank the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because sometimes we find ourselves in situations where we doubt the existence of God because of the things that we go through. I've come to tell you this morning, never doubt in the dark what you are told in the light. Ah, the Lord God who has made you has a plan for you. He has promises for you. For the fact that you survive and you are still existing up to this day, it shows that there is a plan, there is a purpose for your life. And I pray for you today, that purpose, that plan, Will be materialized it will come to pass the lord will make a way for you the lord will cause the heavens to be open the lord will move mountain the lord will, 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 will fill valleys the lord will level hills to come through for you he will break through the doors he will break through the barriers and prevail over your situation so that you will know that god is a living god glory to god one target, one thing that the enemy seeks to fight is the faith of the, of the Christian, of the believer. Why? Because it is the strength on which the believer thrives and communicates with God. I am not sure you know that God is not man. God is not physical. God is not material. God is not, you know, you know, one that you can see with your two optical eyes. God is spirit. Therefore, you require faith to relate with that God. Therefore, Satan knows the, the essence of your faith. Satan knows the, the you, know, you, know, you, know, you know, the power of your faith as he fights it, as he tends to subdue it. But I pray today, maybe your faith has been weaker. Maybe your faith has been in a dormant situation. Maybe your faith has been tampered with because of the things that you went through, because of, of your experience. I pray today, let your faith receive strength. Let your faith receive strength. Let your faith be awakened. Let your faith be strengthened. Let your faith be enlightened. In the name of Jesus, let your faith begin to receive pillars to stand firm and to stand tall in the face of opposition. In the name of Jesus. What is faith? Bible told us in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 that to faith is the substance of things up for and the evidence of the things that you have not seen. In other words, faith is substantial. In other words, faith is evidential. It means when you have faith, it is enough assurance that you will get whatsoever you are asking God for. When you have faith, it is enough assurance. It's enough evidence to, to know that whatever you are hoping to get from the Lord will surely come to pass. Meaning your faith becomes the conveyor of whatever provision that you need a heaven to release unto you. I repeat, your faith becomes the conveyor, becomes the road, becomes the pathway through which every of your provision is released from heaven. For faith is the substance of the things that you offer. It is the substance. It is what you can hold as the evidence right now that what you are trusting the Lord for, it will do for you. Are you hearing me today? I pray strength upon your faith. Are you hearing me today? It is the substance, it is the evidence of the things that you so desire. Glory to God. It is the grounds on which the miraculous happen. When there is faith, the miraculous is bound to happen. 
What am I talking about this morning? When there is enough faith in God, when there is enough trust in God, it becomes a ground on which the miraculous take place. Meaning every man with faith, every man with strong and active faith, and viable faith, provides a ground, provides a premise for the miraculous to take place. I pray for you today. Maybe you are trusting God for the miraculous. I pray that your faith becomes strong enough so that the grounds are created, the atmosphere is created, the environment is created for that miraculous event, for that miraculous happening to occur in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I provoke something to, to be released from heaven right now upon your life, upon your family, upon your business, upon your home, upon your job. In the name of Jesus, receive it now by the power of the Lord. That's why Jesus will often ask people, do you believe that I can do this? Do you believe? Three blind men, I'm, you, know, you know, some blind men came to meet him in the book of Matthew chapter 9, verse 27. Matthew 9, verse 27. And they met him, trusting him for healing in their sight. Before Jesus could do anything, he asked them, do you believe that I can do this? <laughs> in other words, what I have only expected from you is believing, is trusting, is knowing that I can do it, that I'm able to do exceedingly abundantly, above all that you can ever imagine or think. It doesn't matter the prevailing circumstances. You must believe against your situation. You must believe against your trials. You must believe against the pressures of your life uh, that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ever ask uh, or think. Uh, Jesus told them there, do you believe that I can do this? Uh, in all that world, you must trust me uh, beyond the blindness that you are seeing right now. Uh, beyond the situation that you are in right now. Uh, beyond the circumstances you are seeing right now. You must trust me beyond them. Uh, you must ask faith in me huh? that I can still make a way, that I can still make something happen. Huh? It doesn't matter how damaged those things have been. Huh? It doesn't matter how locked up they have been. Huh? Who is he that saith a thing huh? and they come to pass when the Lord commanded it not? Huh? Who is he that can shatter a man's cause huh? when God does not put his hand? Huh? Do you believe that I can do that? Because until a man's faith begins to be alive, the miraculous is just a mirage. Until a man's faith begins to be alive, until a man's faith in God begins to be strengthened and be alive, the miraculous will only seem as a mirage. The miraculous will only be a mirage. Why? Because faith provides the grounds. It provides the ground for the miraculous to occur. Jesus told them, uh, maybe I can read it for you now. Matthew chapter 9, uh, Matthew chapter 9, verse 27. And when Jesus departed tents, uh, two blind men followed him, uh, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. Ah, uh, verse 28. Uh, and when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, uh, and Jesus said unto them, uh, Do you see what happened here? They met him. They they met him on the wayside. Uh, they met him on the wayside and started crying after him. Master, have mercy on us. But he did not answer them until he entered the house and they followed him into the house. He did not answer them at first. But when he saw their persistence, when he saw uh, their determination to get a miracle, he sat down and asked them, Do you believe? that I can do this. In other words, it, it, it is not about having mercy on you. It is not about my availability around you. It is not about you having access to God, knowing God and having access to Him. It is not, not, not just praying and knowing how to pray and knowing 
how to speak in tongues, uh, and knowing how to sing in the Holy Ghost, uh, and knowing how to put fire down, uh, and knowing how to jump up in the sanctuary, praising the Lord and singing love songs. Uh, Jesus said, it is not about calling upon me, not about knowing me, not about being in a close proximity with Jesus because they followed him from the wayside and he did not answer the ball. When he got to the house he sat down now and said, young man the problem is not because I cannot give you this thing. The problem is not because I cannot do this thing for you. The problem is do you believe that I can do this? Do you believe that I can do this? My God my God, my God, do you believe that I can do this? I say to you, child of God, do you believe that God can set you free? Do you believe that God can do that thing for you? I dare you to believe this morning. I dare you to believe this afternoon. I dare you to believe this evening. It doesn't matter what the object of your belief is. It doesn't matter what the object of your desire is. You serve a bigger God that can do bigger things for you. You don't serve a dead God. You don't serve a small God. You don't serve a God that is incapacitated. You serve a God with all power, with all ability to do, 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 even much more than what you think. God can even do your thought. God can do your imagination. God can do your thought and your imagination. So it is not about the ability of God. It is about your faith in this God. When he was come into the house, in verse 27, the Bible told us, my God, my God, uh, the Bible told us, uh, told us uh, that he asked them, do you believe, do you believe that I can do this? Do you believe that I can do this? Uh, and in verse 28, uh, they said, yes, we believe. Uh, Master, we believe, we believe uh, that you can do this. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. I speak to somebody here today. Your time of miracle has come. Your time of breakthrough has come. Your time of deliverance has come. God is coming through for you today. I see your faith rising. I see your faith coming up. I see your faith providing. I see your faith making the impossible possible to you today. In the name of Jesus, I see your faith that has been weak, that has been tampered with. I see it coming alive once again right now. Say a big amen. And they said, I believe. Jesus laid his hands on them. And said, receive your sight. My God. Verse 28. And when he was come into the house, the blind man came to him. And Jesus said unto them, believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, yes, we believe. Then he touched their eyes, saying, according to your faith, let it be done unto you. Let it be done unto you according to your faith. If a man will have faith, even as small as a mustard seed, he will say to this mountain. So the issue is not about the bigness of the mountain, or the bigness of the problem, or the bigness of the situation. No, it is about the strength of his faith so that even if his faith is so strong but it's as small as a mustard seed it can move a mighty mountain i speak to somebody here this morning i don't know the mountain confronting you be it financial mountain be it material mountain be it marital mountain be it academic mountain i pray for you i join my faith with your faith today let there be an answer coming to you right now let that mountain be removed before your very eyes, let it flood before your very eyes in the name of Jesus. Say big amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Do you understand that faith is a very important object? It's a very important subject. It's a very important thing because it is the life strength of the believer. And we have seen that Jesus even asked people, do you believe? He requested to see their faith at work before he does anything. Like he told his disciples, if a man will have faith as small as most 
blessing. It can say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast to yonder place. Am I talking to somebody here today? Can I tell you something here? That God Himself even operates by faith. Look at the Bible. Let me quick, you know, you know, you know, fast forward right now. Now, but our Bible said in the book of Romans, chapter 4, verse 17, it said, God collect those things which be not as though they were. God collect those things which be not as though they were. He collect those things which be not as though they were. God operate on the principles and the platforms of faith. That is why he deals with us on the grounds of faith. Let it be unto you according to your faith. Matthew 9 verse 29. Let it be unto you according to your faith. Meaning act, you know, as your faith is, that is how it will be unto you. Your faith is the key. Brothers and sisters, your faith provides the atmosphere. Your faith provides the ground. Your faith um, is a means of, uh, you know, exchange in the realms of the spirit. Faith is spiritual currency. By faith, uh, by faith, men did great things. Even in the Bible, we can't go into that right now because of time. But I'm trying to establish to you the importance of your faith in the Lord. God himself operates on faith. If by faith we can do so much, if faith is, is, uh, is a form of or means of exchange in the realms of the spirit, then we must endeavor to strengthen our faith. I give you three pillars, three pillars that can strengthen your faith and make your faith viable and make your faith a working faith in the name of Jesus. Number one, for your faith to be active, sharp, and working, you must be able to feed it with the word of God. Romans 10 verse 17, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith does not come from anywhere. It comes by hearing. This kind of faith that we're talking about, that produce result as, you know, in our lives as believers, it comes from hearing the word of God. You must maintain a lifestyle of meditating and studying on the word of God. You want your faith to be strong. You want your faith to be active. You must constantly feed it with the word of God. You must you know, you know, constantly have the fullness of the word of God in your life. Romans 10 verse 17. Now faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hearing but the word of God, meaning if you must hear anything, hear the word of God. If you must hear anything, you know, so that your faith can become stronger, you must learn to hear the word of God. You must learn to attend to the word of God. You must learn to meditate and listen to the word of God. Colossians 3, 16 told us, let the word of Christ fill our heart, dwell in our heart, in all richness and in all wisdom. Am I talking to somebody here today? Your faith becomes stronger when the word of God fills your heart. The word of God becomes the number one pillar that strengthens your faith. Number two pillar that can strengthen and uphold your faith is concentrate on the things that God is doing and not on the things that God has not done. Am I talking to somebody here today? When your heart and your concentration is always on the things that are not working, is always on the failure, is always on the negative, your faith becomes weakened, your faith becomes dead, your faith becomes inactive, your faith becomes unproductive. Why? Because those things have a way of choking the faith. They have a way of killing the faith. But when you begin to concentrate on the things that the Lord is doing, the things that he has done, even maybe not in your life, but he has done it in the life of people, it has a way of building your faith towards God. It has a way of making you believe and know that if God did this for Mr. A, he can do this for my life. If God has done it for that, he can do it for me. Somebody once said, he said, if a miracle happened, you know, you know, to your neighbor, it means that God is in 
in your neighborhood. Uh, it's a way of strengthening your faith. Uh, when you, you begin to concentrate on the things that the Lord has done, look at your life. Look at how God has kept you. Look at how God has sustained you. Look at how God has kept your life, strengthened you. Look at your past life that you thought that you will not be able to come out of that problem. But yet you came out because God saw you too. Concentrate on those things. Forget about what is not happening right now. Feed your faith with those things. When your faith becomes strong, it will provide for you in the now. When your faith becomes strong and it's faith so strong with the things that God has done, it will produce results in your present situation. Am I talking here right now? That was what happened now to David in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 37. David told Saul, he said, the God, oh my God, the God who delivered me from the hand of the bear and the mouth of the lion will deliver this Goliath into my hand. Goliath was bigger than bear. Goliath was bigger than a lion. But yet, David concentrated on the little thing, so to say, that God did for him in the bush when he was tending his father's flock. And he saw those things as a sign that God can still deliver him from what he's going through right now. I say to you the same thing. Forget about what you are going through right now. God who has provided for you last year. God who provided for you last week. God who opened the door last month. God who did it five years ago. He can still do it today. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 told us, I am the Lord. I say that not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob shall not be consumed. God will not let you be consumed. God will not let you be frustrated. In the name of Jesus, only believe and trust him. Look at the things that he has done in the past. Look at those situations that could have swallowed you. Look at those things that could have finished you. Look at that point that you were in and you thought that that was the end of your life. And suddenly a miracle happened. That said God is still alive. He can do it today. If he did it yesterday, he can do it today. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed. He has not changed. He cannot change in your time. He cannot change in your season. He cannot change when your own time comes. If he didn't change for others, he can change for you. I said to you this morning, I said to you this afternoon, I said to you whatever time zone you are in, strengthen your faith and believe in this God for every impossibility and it will be so in your life. In the name of Jesus. So David said, the God who delivered me from the lion and the bear can deliver me. Deliver this Goliath into my hand. And it happened. David didn't have a sword. He didn't have a spear. But he killed a giant. It is the giant spear and sword that he used in cutting off the head of all the giant. It means that it is not by power, it is not by might. It is by the Holy Ghost, not by strength, not by power. Power means me, you know, you know, you know, speaks of ability. Am I talking here today? You know, speaks of ability, speaks of, of the things that you have, speaks of the thing that you can use. You know, it is not by power, it is not by might, it is by the Holy Ghost. They will kill the giant without a spear, without a sword, because it is by the power of the Lord. I pray for you this morning. God will show for his power in your life, in your situation, in the name of Jesus. And the third pillar of faith, as I round up today, is let your conversation be right with your faith. Let your conversation be right with your faith. You must, you know, align your conversation. What do you say? What do you speak? You can't be speaking negative and, 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 your, and expect your faith to work. Your faith cannot work. Your words have a way of affecting your faith. Your words have a way of affecting your faith. Your words have a way of affecting your faith. Ah, what do you say? What do you speak? What do you say? What do you speak? That's why the Bible says, let the weak say I'm strong. What do you say? What do you speak? Let the redeemed say so, that I'm redeemed 
from the cross of the Lord. The redeemed, let them say so. Let them say, I am redeemed. Let them say, I'm saved. Let the poor say, I'm rich. Let the weak say, I'm strong. Say the opposite of what your situation is saying. When you begin to speak positively, when you begin to prophesy, and begin to speak what you want, and begin to collect those things which be not as though they were, your faith is strengthened. Your faith begins to produce results. Your faith begins to be active. You cannot be speaking negative and expect your faith to work. You cannot be saying this sickness will finish me and expect your faith to heal you. No, it can't work that way. What you say is what you see. What you think is what you feel. Am I talking this morning here? Am I talking to the here? God will come through for you. Look at the Bible in Ephesians chapter 4. 4 verse 22. It says that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. That is the way the unbelievers talk. There is a way the old man talks. The old man speaks of the sinful nature. The, the old man speaks of your old self before you came to Jesus. The old man speaks of the thing that he feels, thing that he sees, things that you know, you know, things that are happening. He speaks of 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 events, of happenings around him. But the new man don't speak like that. No, the Bible says that you put off. Concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful laws, you must align your conversation. You must mind what you say. You must mind how you speak. It doesn't matter what is glaring and staring you on the face. Don't speak that negative thing. Instead, speak the opposite of that. There's poverty everywhere. Begin to pronounce riches. Uh, then you know, you know, you know, you know, there's sickness everywhere, begin to speak out. There's failure everywhere, begin to speak success and opponent. Speak what you want. Speak what the word of God says about you. you speak what God's promises are over your life. Speak it. When you when you, you begin to speak in alignment with your faith, it's strengthening your faith. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I stop here today. I pray that in the name of Jesus, that the Lord God Almighty will strengthen you. Mm. God will uphold you with his right hand of righteousness. God will keep you safe. He will strengthen you. God will show to the world that you are his own. God will deliver you from every predicament. God will deliver you from every shame and from every reproach. In the name of Jesus, I want to pray for as many right now who are in terrible situation, who are in diverse kind of problem, and they are wondering, how, how can I come out? I pray for you. God will invade every barricade. God will invade every darkness in your life. God will invade your situation and come through for you and pull you out of the mighty clay, pull you out of the pit and set you up, you know, you know with princes in the name of Jesus. Set you up above your fellows in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. I pray a miracle for you. I pray a healing for you. I pray a deliverance for you. I pray an answer to you. Whatever delay that has happened in your life, I pray an answer right now in the name of Jesus. I pray deliverance right now unto you. I pray healing unto you right now. I pray for people who are sick, sick, attacked by disease. I pray for healing right now unto you. Receive that healing now. In the name of Jesus. I pray for every need in your life. I pray for every desire of your life. Let God come through for you. In the name of Jesus. I pray a breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. I give you praise. I give you glory. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. I want to pray for as many who have not accepted Christ into their life as a Savior. I pray for you right now. I want to lead you to the saving grace of Jesus. 
You are there and you don't know Jesus. You are there and you don't have a relationship with Jesus. Without Jesus, there can be no miracle. I need you right now, wherever you are. Wherever you are right now, put your hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, about your word today, I believe that you died and rose for my sake. I believe in your word. I pray right now that you come into my life as my Lord and personal Savior. Watch me from every sin and iniquities and transgressions in the name of Jesus. Save me today. Make me your home as I make you my Lord and personal Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, you are a brand new child of God. Let me pray for you right now. Father, I pray for everyone who has given their life to Jesus. I pray that you save them indeed, O oh God. Wash away their sin. Cause them to be your, your sons and your daughters. Ah, let there be a relationship between you and them, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, I ask that you come upon them and cause them to be strong in you, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. If you pray that prayer, you are a child of God. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. Satan don't have any grief over your life anymore. In the name of Jesus, you are safe. You are secure in Jesus' name. But I need you to get in touch with me. Send me your name. Send me your name and your details so that we can teach you how to be strong in God, how to grow in faith, how to be a sound and a, and, you know, and a good born again Christian, how to live in this wicked world and be victorious in the name of Jesus. God bless you as I expect your message, as I expect to hear from you in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Amen and amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Please subscribe. If you're watching from YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Press that bell icon and share this video. Let everyone hear it so that everyone in your community will be aware of it and be tossed and be, and be blessed by what God is doing. Also, if you're watching from Facebook, kindly like that page and make comment and share. And the Lord will do you good in Jesus' name. And if you feel like to send support or donation, do that through the means displayed on your screen right now. And there are other details that you know that will come up after this video. And please take note of them and reach out to us. And God will bless you in Jesus' name. I thank God for your life. And I was so happy, so excited to share God's word with you today. And I pray that that word produce fruit in your heart in Jesus' name. Until I come your way next time, stay blessed, stay strong in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and bye-bye.